Okay, in part two of this RefWorks plus Invivo tutorial, we're going to jump into Invivo. Remember in part one, we saw uh, how to use RefWorks. You export citations from the Hunt library. You also download your PDFs. I also like to upload my PDFs into RefWorks so I can keep track of them. But in the course of downloading my PDFs, I save them to a file. For example, doing research, research on management execution. Notice I've got uh, a lot of PDFs here. And I find that uh, when I upload a lot of PDFs of literature into in, in vivo, although I didn't use very good practice here, you should name your file with some keywords that you can remember, but also put the author and date. And the reason you put the author and date is once you've made notes or highlighted key points of the literature that you want to use when you write your literature review, the highlights that you make uh, in vivo will record uh, the title of the, the source document from which it came from. And if you name it with author, date, and some keywords, that helps you to keep track of where it came from. Okay, so let's go into in vivo and let's take a look at how this is done. Um, so we're opening up, I've got in vivo 9, some of you may have better versions of this. I bought this myself about a year and a half ago. Uh, on eBay. I don't think there's any more cheap copies on eBay anymore. Um, and I played with it myself and also uh, attended a few um, tutorials. Alright, so I use this extensively in working on a literature review for a dissertation, so I'm going to open up this file uh, so you can see all the different literature files I have in here. Okay. So, how did I get, notice these are all PDFs. Notice I've used good practice by putting the, the author, the date, and some keywords. And you'll see the uh, merit to this in shortly when I see, show you the summary. So, how do you upload PDFs for analysis into um, uh, in vivo? Okay, so you take external data, you click on external data tab, click on PDFs, and then you can upload. Okay? And let's just uh, let's upload one just so you can see how it's done. I, I uploaded uh, this one. Um, this is one that I got just uh, in the previous tutorial on RefWorks. Also something you may do when you upload your PDF, you may want to put some attributes like classification. Uh, for example, I already created some classifications. It's a sorting mechanism. Uh, for some of the literature I used in this uh, literature review, notice I had execution, project management competencies, practices, uh, practice, theory, success. Okay, so I'm going to put this under project, well, let's put it under practice since it's project risk management. And then, bang, there it is. It's uploaded. All right, now what you want to do once you have all of your literature in place, remember in the old days you would print out journal articles. You might highlight it with a highlighter pen, make notes on note cards, and you may or you may do something like highlighted important literature and then spread your literature out on the floor to organize it in an outline. What I like to do is this: open up uh, your document one by one, and when you see something that looks interesting, uh, you highlight it. Okay, like uh, this is an interesting point. And then you uh, can associate that with a theme. Notice I've created a lot of themes. Uh, competence, execution, uh, practice, project success, also different types of research, uh, theory. Uh, so you might wonder, where do those themes come from? Well, you can create themes on the fly. Like, for example, this paper analyzes. Okay, I could type in analysis and just make that a theme and hit return. Boom, I've just created a theme, a, a node, uh, analysis. Uh, so what you do is go through papers one by one, highlight areas that you think are interesting and have merit for inclusion in your literature review, and then just assign uh, a theme to it or a node in in vivo uh, terminology. Uh, this node helps you keep track of uh, recurring uh, areas, like I did uh, project management theory, uh, temporary organizations, uh, project success. So these are recurring themes I saw in the literature. Uh, once you do this, 
uh, over time you start to build up a lot of different references. Uh, notice I can organize this by nodes from uh, uh, highest number to lowest number of uh, highlighted themes and then the number of uh, references, the number of different themes that were found in a certain article. Okay, so as I'm doing this on the fly, if I want to go out of the source view, which shows uh, at a glance the documents that I've, I've uploaded, and then go into nodes, um, I can look at this. And this is just uh, uh, the result of highlighting key areas in my literature and identifying it with a theme. This is equivalent to like having uh, little note cards or yellow sticky notes to keep track of themes as they reoccur through the literature. And let's just click, let's click on one that uh, appeared a lot. Uh, like execution, success measured by achievement of objectives. I click on this and by clicking on this I see all the different times that this appeared. And see, uh, based upon how I've labeled my source document, this tells me where all these themes came from. Like all of these were highlights from a single article. Uh, project Management Journal Retrospective on Project Success from 2005. Here's one from Cleland 2004. Uh, Hartman Watts Trevelin 2013. Jugdev Miller 2005. So these are just highlights I took from that article. Saved them as the node execution success measured by um, well, can't really see it fully. Anyway, it was a highlighted, oh yeah, measured by achievement of objectives. As I saw that theme in different articles, I just used it again, and now I could collect it all together. Now, one thing that uh, helps me is once I've done all of this, and this took a while to get this level of analysis, I like to use in vivo's function of a cluster analysis. This function compares all the themes that you've identified and shows how they're related to each other. Okay, so let me go to the cluster analysis. Where is it? Explore. Okay, explore cluster analysis. Let's look at nodes. I want to see nodes. Those are the themes I've identified. I want to see how certain themes are related to each other. And by doing this, and, and it compares it by the similarity of words used in different themes, and it gives you a correlation coefficient, uh, just correlating one theme versus another. All right, so, okay, I've got to select what nodes I want. Okay, um, let's go select all. You're going to see a lot of nodes there. So, nah, maybe I won't do select all. All right, so this uh, I'll show you another one that did not select all in just a moment. But anyway, you can select what nodes you want to compare. Then when you do that, it thinks about it, and it takes all the different themes you've done and compares them one to, one to another and creates a cor correlation coefficient. Why would you bother with this? Well, I found that it kind of um, creates an inductive outline. It just does a lot of analysis internally shows how one theme is related to another and uh, you could see it at a glance. Now while this is thinking about it I'm just gonna go to one that is already done. This is just looking at the nodes associated with execution literature. Alright, so this is the end result of using in vivo. Where did I, what did I end up with? Okay. Okay, this is the cluster analysis that appears. You saw what I just did. Let me go to 200% so we could see it better. Uh, what Invivo was working on now is comparing every theme that I identified, looking at the similarity of words and kind of grouping them together based on a co correlation coefficient. How meaningful is this? Well, maybe it's arguable how meaningful it is, but to me, this is a good inductive tool to help look at all the key points you've pulled together. Now you can look at it, and, and you, I've, I use it to form kind of an inductive outline. Um, it helps me to see how themes kind of clump together, and it helps me write. Okay, now once I do this, I pull out all of the themes. You can just copy this out of in vivo. Um, this is like my yellow sticky notes, all the highlights I've made from articles, and it's attached to the source that it came from, name and date. 
and I've got these all out at a glance here. So all, every theme that I identified and where it came, came from, I just put this, notice there's 45 pages here, there's a lot of it. It's all spread out. Uh, so how do I write a literature review? I look at this to try to get an idea of how all the pieces fit together. Then I start writing and when I see a topic and I want to remember what I've read and highlighted, I can go down to this Word document and find it and say, oh, okay, field observations conflicted with theoretical predictions. That was Tataconda and Rosenthal, 2000. And, and so I can write uh, based upon what I, well, the notes I've made here, put it in my other Word document, and guess what? When I do that, I can go to RefWorks and insert the citation. And how do I know what citation to use? Because it captured it in this uh, document that I put together. So you could say that, boy, this takes a lot of work to put together. It does, but once you build this framework, writing it out goes a lot simpler. Okay, so in tutorial one, it was how to get into RefWorks um, from the Hunt Library. What do you use it for? You use it to export citations and keep them in folders so you can keep your research organized. Finally, you can uh, download the actual PDFs and attach them to um, the RefWorks citations so you can have it all in one place. Also, save a copy of those PDFs, label the PDFs with the name and date of the author and some keywords of the title. Why do you do that? So you can upload it into, and see this is still thinking about it. I made a mistake of, of putting too many uh, nodes at once. Um, now it's going to take a while. All right, so you put uh, name, date, name of the author, the date, keywords, and the title. Uh, and you do that because when you highlight it and save and, and put a, a key comment and save it as a node, uh, then at, at the end of the day, you have all of your notes attached to where it came from, which is a very, very useful when you're writing your literature review. Plus, you have this. Uh, inductive outline that NVivo can produce for you showing how all uh, the ideas you have identified are, are grouped together. Okay, so like I just did a literature review where I had four major sections. Each of them I used in vivo. I used RefWorks, uh, exported citations to RefWorks, exported the PDF, attached them to Ref, RefWorks, labeled the PDF appropriately so I could uh, key on it when I'm writing the literature review, I went through and highlighted key points in each. Uh, they're known as nodes in in vivo. Uh, once I've done that, then I did a cluster analysis of just those nodes for each section of the literature review. It produces this to help me build an outline. As I'm starting to write based on this, I might need to go back and review so I remember what I've read. And I've copied out all of my nodes and I just happened to put them in time order so I could go through and see the progression of literature over time and see key points and where they came from. So you can see using RefWorks plus in vivo together really takes the drudgery out of writing a literature review. You're focused more on what are people saying and how do the ideas contribute to the body of knowledge rather than keeping yourself organized and going through a lot of paper and yellow sticky notes. So I think this, uh, I think you'll find this way of doing it very helpful and I can put together literature reviews relatively quickly. You do the upfront work and then it all falls together. So I'll end it now. Notice I've got too many nodes in here. It's only 30% done. So uh, we'll be this tutorial will be done long before it finishes, but I think you get the idea. If you have further questions, we could do follow-ups and I could walk it through walk through it with you in more detail.